Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Goal, joining you for another one of my videos. As always, at the start of one of these videos, I just want to say thank you for all your continued support. Thank you for the likes, thank you for the subscriptions, uh, and just thank you for the nice comments you tend to leave. And if this is new to you and your first time stumbling across this channel, like I said, I'm the Arsenal correspondent for Goal. I cover Arsenal up and down the country, across Europe once the uh, European games start up again and um, try and bring you all the news that I can from behind the scenes at the club and um, yeah, just basically covering this wonderful football club for you. So please do hit subscribe if this is your first time here and if you like this video, hit the like button as well. I appreciate all the support as always. Right, let's watch we talk about today. Let's start with William Saliba, shall we? The Arsenal centre-back. £27 million signing from St Etienne in 2019, but he could well be on his way to the championship. Um, obviously, Saliba was very, very close to rejoining St Etienne on loan and during the summer transfer window. That deal was pretty much done and uh, collapsed right at the last minute on Monday on transfer deadline day because Arsenal and St Etienne ran out of time to complete that signing. Um, Saliba obviously spent last season at St Etienne, but it was a difficult season. He only played 15 games. He had two really serious injuries. Um, and then when he did get back from the second one and started to play regularly, COVID-19 came around and the uh, League One shut down and was... Um, well, it wasn't even suspended, it was just shut down and ended early. And that meant he only played 15 games last season. And when Arsenal were kind of hoping that that year was going to be the year when he played an awful lot of games and got himself really prepared for the Premier League, it just didn't happen. And um, they believe that he needs some more game time before being really ready. They, they don't want to just throw him into the Premier League and suddenly him get eaten by the wolves and um, you know struggle early on, knocks his confidence. You've got to remember he's 19, he's only played 32 senior games in his whole career, William Saliba. I know there's loads of expectations on him. Everyone thought he was going to come in and be this monstrous defender. Compare, people were comparing him to Virgil van Dijk, but he's a 19-year-old kid adjusting to life in a new country. Just lost his mum as well, uh, which hasn't helped, obviously. you know, tragic for, for anyone, but for a 19-year-old kid who's just come to a new country on his own, doesn't speak the language. It's been a really, really difficult time for Saliba. So Arsenal working out what to do with him. And they're looking now at moving him to the championship. Ideally, they would have sent him back to an Etienne, but that didn't get done in time. So the only route they have now to go down in terms of a transfer Saliba is a domestic deal uh, to the lower leagues. They can't deal to another Premier League club, but they can deal with the lower league clubs until the domestic window shuts on October 16th, which is a week today. Obviously, he's not going to go to League One, so they're looking at the championship and uh, talking to various clubs who have expressed an interest in taking Saliba. Arsenal are going to take their time on this one. They've still got a week to go, and they want to do a very thorough process before deciding if they should send him out, which it's looking, from what I understand, it's looking like they will. Uh, he didn't make it into the Europa League squad um, that was announced yesterday, so he can't even play in that competition in the group stages if he stays at Arsenal. So he's just not going to play much football. So there's no point in him sitting here training. Um, he needs game time. So that's what Arsenal want to use this season for so that next season he'll be really ready and have a lot of experience under his belt. So that's why they're talking to a lot of championship clubs at the moment to decide what's best for Saliba. Now Arsenal are very vigorous when it comes to loan uh, and loaning players out. They were bitten you know, pretty badly with the whole Serge Gnabry, Gnabry um, deal when they sent him out to West Brom and we all know what happened there and how disillusioned uh, Gnabry came over that and basically it sort of led to his decision to leave England and not sign his new contract with Arsenal. Um, and since then, they've started really working hard with their loan deals. They've brought in Ben Napper, who's the loan manager at Arsenal. And they kind of do this apprentice style uh, interview process in deciding clubs. It's what a lot of the younger players have gone through recently. Smith Rowe, for example, when he went over to Leipzig. Uh, Eddie Nketiah, when he went to Leeds. And they basically whittle it down to three different clubs. And then they, those clubs get invited to London Colney and they all sit down and they get grilled by Arsenal, by the player, by the player's agents about exactly how they're going to use them this season, what their plans are, what sort of football they play, where they want to see the player playing. Um, so it's a really stringent process. And then once that's over, Arsenal and the player, this, in this case it'll be Saliba and his agent, will sit down and they'll work out which club sort of sold the best dream really for what, how they're going to use it. So that's the process Arsenal are going to use with Saliba and um, 
it'll be interesting to see where he ends up. You sort of look at some of the, the key clubs that could be there. Brentford, I've heard, are one of the ones that have expressed an interest in a very good side, but they do have a decent defence and a decent centre-back pairing. So you wonder, is that, you know, is he going to play loads there? Um, you look at Watford just over the road from Arsenal, would mean no upheaval really for Saliba. They train literally next door, so he could stay where he is now. You know, no uprooting, which for a player who's gone through an awful lot recently, that's probably a good thing. So I, I'd be surprised if they send him way off to the north or something like that. I think it's certainly a local club or Watford, a Brentford, you know, a Reading or so, someone like that would be a good option for him. But Arsenal will decide that over the next seven days about exactly what to do. They might end up keeping him. You never know. They might end up keeping him thinking it's just train, training with a, the squad and adjusting that way will be good for a few months. But certainly my information at the moment is they are sort of leaning towards sending him out and they are in discussion over that with a few different clubs at the moment. Um, I have put a story on goal.com. I'll write, I'll drop that in the description uh, below about the whole Saliba situation so you can read a little bit more on it. Um a little, little bit of other news for you, a Bamiyang injury. Now, it's been doing the rounds a little bit. He obviously pulled out the uh, Gabon squad because of this injury. Um, he got a really nasty kick on the ankle. You, I'm sure you all saw it against Sheffield United last uh, last Sunday, wasn't it, the game? Uh, it was a bad tackle from um, Serge... Um, God, I've forgotten his name. What's the... Uh, Serge... But, uh, Sander Burge, that's it. Sander Burge, the Sheffield United midfielder, and went right in on his ankle, looked in a lot of pain, thought for a bit that Birmingham might have to go off, but he stayed through that, got through the game. But he did pull out the Gabon in, um, international squad because of it, but my understanding is that he's fine and he has been training this week at London Colney. So no serious issue, thankfully, for Bamiang, and he should be fine for when Arsenal play at Manchester City after the international break. One player who looks like he won't is Kieran Tierney. Uh, Arsenal still trying to work out how they can get um, Tierney back from Scotland from his isolation. Um, they are in regular contact with Tierney, but he's still up there. He's still isolating, and um, it's a really complicated process uh, for Arsenal at the moment. Obviously, there's very strict rules being introduced in Scotland for people who are isolating, and um, that's where uh, Tierney is at the moment. So it's going to be... You know, if they have to follow the letter of the law, which at the moment it probably looks like they will have to, it's going to be 14 days for Tierney up in Scotland before he can come back. Not ideal at all, but again, it's the way of the world, and I think we're going to see more and more of this at the moment. Just fingers crossed, nothing else happens with Arsenal during this international break with their players all over the world at the moment. Um, just wanted to talk in a little bit. Of, I'm sure you probably saw it yesterday. We saw there was a couple of interviews out on Arsenal.com. If you haven't seen them, you should go over because they're very, very good. One really good one with Edu, one with good one with Mikel Arteta. I wanted to talk to one about Mikel Arteta, sort of hinting at the formation change. I think I've covered it in these videos before, and the fact I think Thomas Partey's arrival is going to really change Arsenal going forward in terms of how we've seen them set up under Arteta. Obviously, the 3-4-3 that he settled on fairly recently has tightened things up defensively, and it's been very, very good in that regard. It's mass massively played a part in the FA Cup win last season, but it sort of limited them a little bit in terms of attacking intent. Um, I think 4-3-3 is certainly the way we're going to see Arteta shape up long term or a 4-2-3-1 even like we saw in the second half against Sheffield United and Partey's arrival is certainly going to help with that because it's just going to add so much more quality to the midfield and so many more options to the midfield and um, I've, this quote from Mikel Arteta I'll read you now I think sort of says an awful lot about how much of an impact Partey, Partey's arrival is going to have. Um, speaking to Arsenal.com, Arteta said, I think he allows us to play different formations and he can fit in with those formations in different positions, which is a really good thing to have in a squad where in midfield I think we were a little bit short. I have a few things in mind that I want to start to train with the team and party signing is going to give us a little bit more adaptability and more balance in defending and attacking transitions and the way we have to set up certain structures to attack better in certain moments of the game. And that's the key, attack better, because I think we've all, we've all noticed it with Arsenal. Obviously, they've tightened up defensively. The defensive record is much better. But attacking-wise, they are still a little bit limited. The midfielders not been able to link to the attack, and the attack have oft often found themselves isolated. But Partey, although he's seen very much as this defensive midfielder, this destructive ball winner, miles more to his game than that. You look at his numbers, they're fantastic. They're not fantastic, but they're very, very good going forward. And they're better than what Arsenal have already got in midfield in terms of the central midfield options going forward. And in terms of dribbles, miles better than anyone else. Um, in terms of shots, you know, just all, all of them. Chances created, he's very, very all-round player. He's not a, just a ball winner. He's so much more than that. 
And I think Partey signing and what Mikel Arteta is saying there is going to really excite and transform how Arsenal play going forward. So I think the days of the 3-4-3 certainly soon will start to see that transition to more of a 4-3-3. Maybe not straight away because Arsenal got some very difficult away games coming up after the international break and Partey has only just arrived. So you've got to give them a little bit of time to settle. But I think we're going to certainly see as the season progresses, as the next couple of months progress, Arsenal transitioning away from the three at the back system that we've seen to a flat back four and getting that extra man in midfield that I think they've lacked recently. Um, and then just finally, another, it was a really good interview, the one with Edu. I just want to pick one bit out of it. He talks about this sort of omission of the players. We know that Mesut Ozil didn't make the Europa League squad, probably isn't going to make the Premier League squad when that gets announced on October 25th, the 25-man squad, that is. Uh, Socrates as well didn't make the Europa League squad. Saliba, obviously, because it looks like he's on his way out, as well didn't make it. And Edu was asked about that during this interview that he did with Arsenal.com and he said he sort of described the process and he said the way we did it is to sit down with the players, be open with the players. I spoke to the agents, was open to the agents as well. The only way we can do that is to be open, clear and face to face to explain why Mikel made that decision. So Edu saying this is very much Mikel's decision, why Mesut and Socrates as well obviously was not included in the squad. But it was an interesting little insight to Edu and uh, how Arsenal are uh, trying to be more and more open. I thought the interviews are great as well, and that's since Vinay uh, Vakatshem came in as chief executive and um, Edu, obviously, as technical director. They, they are trying to now be more open and have more lines of communication, which I think Arsenal have been pretty poor at in the last couple of years. But I think it's quite good signs that they are now trying to engage more, be more open, send their messages to fans more. So if you haven't seen those videos yet, those interviews, I do advise you head over to arsenal.com because they're very, they're very good and they're well worth a watch. Right, that's about it for this today's video. Thank you very much for joining me, everyone. I hope it was informative. Um, please, like I said at the start of this, if you liked it, Give, it, give, the, give the channel a like, give the video a like, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and you'll find me on Twitter, at Charles underscore Watts. I'm on Facebook as well, and please do head over to goal.com for all your Arsenal news. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a very good day.